get right with God. <laughs> Looking down through the ages, God beheld the dying soul. Sin had brought separation. Nevermore could men behold. There must come around one whose blood alone redeems, bringing gifts to the Father of the soul made white and clean. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and He washed me this I know. Listen to this life verse. I think the whole gospel hinges on this life verse. So He left that holy city, traveling on to the cross, just to bridge the gulf to glory, and rescue all the lost. By his blood he entered into the throne room of our God. And on the mercy seat he placed it, salvation for us all. And when he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am. He views me in garments white as the snow. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and He wants me to sign no. For the Lamb of God is worthy, and He wants me to sign no. Amen. You know, He came into His own, but they received Him not. But it, to many as received him, gave me the power, gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even them that believe on His name. This is a song. He is I am. Brother Barker told me over in the in the little church, the little mission over here one time. He said, "I sang that song." Here. Brother Billy Joe said, "Anytime you sing in my, in my with my congregation, sing this song. This is really a scriptural song. I love this song right here." I don't think I have to make that long way, Daddy said, stretch him finger now, son. He came unto his own, but they received him not. The word inside a body, the lamb without a spot. He tried and tried to tell them, he said, I am the way. They couldn't understand. He could say, I am the Son of God, I am the vine, I am the good shepherd, and I know which are mine. I am the light, and with you I will be. And when they ask if he was Jesus, he said, I am he. He is I am. Everybody. He is I am. Sing along. He is I am. But I am nothing without him. Moses on the mountain questioned God the same. Who shall I say sent me? What is your name? The Father said, go tell them, I am sent you, you know that I'll be with you, I'll show you what to do. He is I am, he is I am, sing along, he is I am, but I am nothing without. He is the resurrection. Yes, he is. 
He is the way. He said, I'll be with you. He still is today. He is I am. He is I am. That's a good one. I love it. I love to hear Johnny Pruitt singing this song right here. He, he got it on soundtrack, brother. Barbie don't like the soundtrack. But uh, this is my soundtrack right here. <laughs> one night upon the sea, a ship was tossing to and fro. Breakers dashed on every hand, angry winds around the blow. Hold on just a minute, will you please? I gotta get that frog voice down. You can go on down there now. What do you say, look? I have sort of that over again. I I just I wasn't going through it. One night upon the sea. A ship was tossing to and fro. Breakers dashed on every hand. Angry winds around did blow. All aboard were filled with fright as the mighty billows rolled. And they called upon the one through the winds and waves control. When he reaches out his hand, Billow cease at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they all did say that the wind and sea obey? He's the one who sailed with me. He's the master of the sea. Though the storms of life may rage, and the billows round you roll. He can calm life's troubled seas as he did in days of old. As a bone I see you sail, trust in him who'll never fail. I'm so glad he sails with me. He's the master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, Billow ceases his command. When he waves obey his will, when he says to them, be still. What man is this they all did say that the wind and sea obey? He's the one who sailed with me, he's the master of the sea. He's the one who sails with me. Yes, he is. He's the master of the sea. Amen. Hey, man. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to have a couple of announcements here and take our offering. And it's such a blessing to have Billy Joe play. And we'll have some more singing here in just a moment. He'll play for the offering. And then we'll have another number. Uh, we're glad that... Uh, folks are here in church today and our announcements for the church family and also for those out in Facebook. We'll be having our regular services. We'll have prayer meeting at 5 o'clock uh, this afternoon and then church at 6. And I encourage everyone that can make it, you that are here in church, to be back tonight. I'd like to see everybody come back and got a good crowd this morning and like to see a good crowd tonight. And then uh, we'll have our regular services Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 a.m., our regular mission services uh, uh, with hot meals to follow. And then our midweek service will be prayer meeting at 5 and, and church at 6 on Wednesday. And I hope you're there uh, for those. And then we have next Sunday, uh, we have what is uh, commonly called Easter Sunday. I like to call it Resurrection Sunday myself. And we'll be having that next week, and we'll have a very, very special meal and and uh, extra things and a lot of specialty items. We're going to have a great Easter service or resurrection service next week, and 
make your plans to be here and invite others. It's going to be a great day next Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock. And then again next Sunday evening, prayer meeting at 5 and and church at 6. So those are our uh, uh, events for the coming week. Now let us pray for the offering. Lord, we thank you now that you've given us um, uh, some type of an income and and whatever it may be, we know the biggest gift recognized in the Bible has been the widow's two mites, yeah. just a couple parts of a penny, and she gave it all. And so help us to give as you provided for us, giving in. Uh, God loves uh, uh, cheerful giving and sacrificial giving, and help us to give now to have the work of God go forward and precious souls can be saved and the... Uh, the folks can be helped and encouraged and strengthened. So we're thankful for that now. And uh, we pray that you'd uh, bless our offering now at this time. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, Brother Joe, we'll get it back on you. Uh, Travis? Come on up here. Grab a pan. Uh, grab a pan there and pass around that pan. I like Travis. I do too. I like him because he's bigger than me. <laughs> That's just one reason. <laughs> he's a sweet person, though, ain't he? He is. You think Travis is a sweet person? I, I do. do. Oh, I do. Uh, my brother wrote this song about our pastor here. Because he just, because he just looked like an old-time preacher, man. He walked up to my front porch with a Bible in his hand. I could tell by the way he looked, he was an old-time preacher, man. He asked, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. I'd like to talk to you, he said, about a friend of mine. Was an old time preacher man came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, he taught me how to pray. He opened up his Bible and as he read to me how Jesus died on the cross, the cross of Calvary. Do you believe Jesus died on that cross for you? Well, if you do, then trust him now, and he will save you too. He was an old-time preacher man. He came to me that day with his Bible in his hand. He taught me how to pray, taught me how to pray. Okay, Billy Joe, let's have another song and then we'll preach. sad song. Now here I am. Yeah. <laughs> this is a sad song. It's about my mother. But you know, she she was singing this to me from the other side. And that's what I want to thank yeah. anyway. On a day in sorrow in tears for my loved ones I'm a child bound for heaven since Jesus came in Though my body is weary my soul has its feeling sins are forgiven I can feel him within pray I've got off on this I'm going to do something else I, I, I knew I shouldn't be trying to sing that song I, I knew I shouldn't try to sing that song got off on my tune got off on my tune and that's that's sign from God 
that I should be trying to sing you that song. And the other time I wouldn't have a hard time trying to sing. Ernest wrote this song. My brother wrote this song. He's more than a savior. Amen. He's more than a savior. And a great king. More than the Lamb of God. Sent to redeem. More than his willingness to make us free. He's more than a Savior, my Savior and King. He was so willing to take the place of all who have sinned and face disgrace. If you only trust him and the price he paid, he's more than a savior. If you trust him today, you must believe only in him, or you'll never reach heaven as you had planned. If you want to be with him, there's only one way. He's more than a savior. Won't you trust him today? He's more than a savior. Won't you trust him today? Hey man, give Billy Joe a good hand. Thank the Lord. We appreciate so much his uh, singing for us, and it adds so much to our our service. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter four, verse eighteen. Luke four eighteen. chapter 4 is our New Testament reading for today. In the Old Testament, we're reading in uh, the book of Joshua, believe 14, 15. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the four Gospels. These first three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're called the Synoptic Gospels. And they go over a lot of the same events. You have four Gospels. The Synoptic Gospels re review the birth of Christ and a lot of the events of his life. And, and then his uh, crucifixion, his death and burial and resurrection. Uh, so uh, it's good to read all of them. Some of the Gospels tell part of it, and they all they, they work... Uh, together to tell the whole story some people try to they criticize the bible and say well it says this in in one gospel it says this in another they're actually they're, they're not contradictory they're complementary it's telling the whole story as you read all of the gospels so uh, let us remember that i was studying uh the bible with my grandson andrew yesterday and we were discussing that as we were discussing uh some things in luke so, uh, chapter 4, a couple of pages stuck together here. Pretty new Bible I'm using here. Come on. Man, I can't get these pages apart. There you go. Luke 4, 18 says, and the, the, uh, this is Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon Jesus, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I like that. 
This is the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And he says that he... Now, he had no ministry before this, you understand. Jesus started his public ministry here after his baptism. And then he went out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was tempted of the devil. And then uh, he came out and now he, he quoted uh, the prophet Isaiah. Okay. Sixth first chapter. Verses 1 and 2. It's, it's where, this, where he got this prophecy from. The Spirit of the Lord is because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. My ministry of over 40 years has been basically uh, to the poor. I think Jesus has set a good example here. I texted out today this verse. And if you're on my texting uh, roll, I, I've texted it to you. And I count it a privilege uh, to have a ministry like Jesus did that I, I care about the poor. My ministry's always been to the poor. I, I've had a, uh, call it a poor church. That's fine. I don't care which, any, anybody's welcome here, but basically my church is for the poor. Uh, Amen. And, and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen? I, I get a lot of brokenhearted people. There's brokenhearted people today. How, how many of you say here today, you've got a broken heart about some matter today? Raise your hand up. Look at here. The majority of the audience today has a broken heart about something. Isn't that something? Yes, it is. So the Holy Spirit of God is upon Jesus, he said, to preach to the poor and to heal the, the, the broken hearted. Oh, I love it, the broken hearted. Uh, and to preach deliverance to the captives. Oh, boy, isn't that good? I had someone come up in Sunday school today and surrender their cigarettes because they were captive to cigarettes and they surrendered them in Sunday school today. Uh, how many, uh, 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 how many uh, uh, church members do we have here that are captive to the nasty tobacco? To tobacco, raise your hand up. Yeah, I'm captive to the nasty tobacco. Listen, dear one, I uh, appreciate your honesty of raising your hands. And There's people out there on Facebook that are captive to the, to the nasty tobacco. And uh, you don't have to be captive because through the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm his minister today, that the Lord Jesus Christ and through the power and to have faith in God, uh, you don't have to be captivated by tobacco anymore. Amen? Yeah? I hope you'll, uh, you'll get, to get that monkey off your back. I've been saved April 4th, 1969. 79, 89, 99, 109. I've been saved uh, 49 years now, okay? And uh, uh, I used to smoke three and a half packs of cigarettes every day. And let me say something to you. I used to smoke the heavy, high-octane high, uh, high ones. I used to smoke Pall Mall. And uh, 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 the, 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 the reason I smoked Pall Mall instead of, besides, instead of Lucky Strike or Camel because they were longer. That's why I smoked Pall Mall. Now, actually, that's where I smoked them. Because there's more cigarette there. And, 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 and I wouldn't like these. I don't know. Some people take a couple of drags. I used to smoke them babies down to nothing, man. Down to the nub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank God. Since April 4th, 1969, uh, uh, the, only, the only cigarette smoke I've inhaled has been secondhand uh, uh, smoke that... I, I, I'm glad we. I, I'm glad they don't have no smoking in restaurants in Florida. You know, sometimes I go to another state and I go in a restaurant where they're smoking. Wow, I don't like to be around smokers. I don't allow no. Uh, uh, I don't allow no smoking in my house, and I don't go to people's houses that smoke. And so uh, I'm kind of. I stay away from cigarettes, and and God help you. Why, why don't you? Uh, uh, Oh, man, I'm praying for you, Wade. You're going to stay delivered from the captive, amen? amen? You know, another thing that captivates a lot of our people is alcoholic beverage. Oh, I had, uh, uh, today, I, I, I was given, uh, uh, they do, people donate things in here to the mission, and I was given, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five bottles of uh, cooking wine. 
this regular wine is fourteen. It's 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 fourteen. Uh, it's fourteen point five percent. That's regular wine, about fourteen uh, percent. How, how many of you ever here in the audience here you've drank cooking wine? Any of you drank cooking wine? And I mean, I opened it up and I smelled it. It just smelled like wine. How, how many of you like to taste cooking wine if you get a shot at it? Okay, got several of them here. Got a few winos in here. Put their hand up. <laughs> now, look, there's another thing. <laughs> huh? Five bottles, yeah, I got five bottles, but the problem is it wouldn't help you today, uh, Rachel, because uh, they're empty. I poured them down the drain. <laughs> I was, I was gonna, I was gonna hide them out here on the property. We got a pretty big property. I was gonna hide them out on the property, and uh, for Easter next week, have a wine hunt. It probably would have went over pretty good. I probably could have got a pretty big crowd, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I did what I was. Uh, Mike's disgusted with me sticking his head like that. No, <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I did what only godly person uh, would do when they get their hands on bottles of wine or whiskey or beer. Pour them down the drain. <laughs> That's what I did when I got saved. I had whiskey and vodka and and uh, Seagram Seven Crown and all that stuff in my cupboard when I got saved. And uh, I cleaned out my drains. And you know what? Haven't had a drink of alcohol in all these, about 49 years now. I haven't had a drink of alcohol all them years. Some of you that are sitting right here in, in church today, uh, uh, you've been, uh, you're under the curse of alcohol even to this day. And other drugs. Marijuana. Uh, and marijuana. Same, same, well. Uh, legalized marijuana, it ain't no worse than alcohol. Who said alcohol's good? Alcohol's the biggest drug problem we have in America. It causes more trouble than all drugs put together. I'm telling you the truth. The, the legal drug of alcohol causes more trouble than all other drugs uh, combined and uh, to deliver the captives. You can be delivered from cigarettes. You can be delivered from alcohol. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up because it might be a little embarrassing for you. Some are addicted to sex, sex addiction. We have a lot of that today, and there's a lot of talk about it today with, uh, uh, with the filthy, rotten, whores and whoremongers, Hollywood crowd, uh, coming out with all their filth, and, 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 and now they're coming out with uh, uh, confessionals, uh, uh, a lot of these Jezebel women that have been sleeping around in Hollywood now they're uh, trying to bring down the movie stars and the actors and everything because uh, uh, now listen to something you go to Hollywood uh, these girls don't go to wa Hollywood to be wallflowers you know that I mean how long have we known about uh, uh, Hollywood. H how many of you have heard over the many years of the casting couch? You ever heard of the casting couch? Yeah. Well, uh, that's where they make their uh, auditions for the producers. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So so we've got it, and there's a lot of it between the Internet and, and magazines and things. There's there's uh, uh, just America is flooded with a sex addiction. Uh, are you addicted to that? Uh, I don't know. But Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord uh, is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. We have those in here. And for each deliverance to the captives. And we have uh, those in here today. And the recovering of the sight of the blind. That's a long person. That's, that's a lost person. The, the blind. If you're blind in here, you know, uh, the song is, uh, Once I was blind, but now I can see. Amen? The light of the world is, uh, the, light of the, world is the gospel. Amen? Amen? Once I was blind, now I can see. And once you can see and you're saved, you're delivered. Deliverance of the captives and to cover sight for the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. 
You know, you can be set at liberty if you were bruised with any of these addictions we've just talked about and any wickedness and any kind of evil that you have and it's bruised you and it's hurt you very much. Let me, let me just tell you this. You and I can be uh, uh, set at liberty from it. It means you can be delivered from our addictions, can't we? And we can be delivered uh, from those equal things. How, how many of you say today, I'm not going to maybe say what it is. It might be one or two or three things. But there's things in my life that I need deliverance from. Is that you today? Oh, yeah. Everybody in the house ought to have their hand up because that's the way it is. If you say that you have no sin, you lie, and the truth is not in you. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all and set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, chapter 4, Luke. And he closed the book, the Bible, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. In the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues, he was preaching in the synagogue here. They, they had the Old Testament scriptures, you know, the Jews. They still have them today. It was in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now, why do you think all the eyes were, were fastened upon Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because he had Holy Ghost power. Amen. Jesus had Holy Ghost power. You see, you and I, uh, Jesus said this, the miracles that I've done, uh, you can do and greater greater miracles can you do what could you do greater than uh, healing blind eyes or raising the dead or healing crippled folks or uh, any of those physical miracles no the thing you could do greater than Jesus did is win more souls you see his save the loss that's right to save the loss because he was only on this earth three years a little over three years between three and three and a half years and but he says we can do greater because we can have this same holy spirit power and he'll bring physical mi miracles can he heal blind today yes can he uh, uh, uh can he heal the lame yes can he feel the multitude? Yes, he can do any miracle he's ever done. But the biggest miracle ever done is the salvation of a soul. I'm glad he saved my wicked soul, aren't you? Amen. The heart of man is whiskey, uh, desperately wicked. I'm so glad. Some of you need to be saved today. Verse 21. And again to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. That's what it said. So he, this was a prophecy about who? About Jesus. The anointed one, he didn't do anything. Did you know Jesus didn't do anything? Jesus did nothing until he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know you and I will be useless. We'll not be able to do anything until we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, isn't that a wonderful thing that we can be filled with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, yeah that's what this is teaching here. And, and I want to be like Jesus. I want to say this like Jesus did. He says the works I do, you can do, and you can do greater. And did you know that Jesus, we, we taught about the Trinity in, in Sunday school today. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The three in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The Trinity, it's such an important uh, Bible teaching of a triune God. One God and three persons. But, but, but as, we, uh, as we taught of that, the one that does the work here on earth, God the Father is where? He's in heaven on his throne. God the Son, or the Word is called in 1 John 5, 7, and I said that this morning in Sunday school, 1 John 5, 7 uh, uh, said uh, uh, that it is agreed in heaven. The Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and, and, and the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, these are in heaven it's settled and they are God and, and, and it says these three are one it's the best verse in the Bible about the Trinity and all of these new Bibles all of the new Bibles have taken out the Trinity they've taken out 1 John 5 7 if you've got a Bible NIV Bible or any other Bible they don't have that verse in it because they're the, they're the devil's book they're not the Bible they're the devil's Bible there's a couple hundred of them out there there's only, one, there's only one Bible that's settled in heaven forever. 
and it had been settled in heaven forever. And in the English language, it's the King James Bible. And that's what we read from, and that's what we preach. And if you don't have a King James Bible, I'd be glad to put one in your hand. If you're here in church and you don't have one, I'll give you one this very day. And you write me or call me from Facebook, I'll put one in your hand also. But uh, uh, this is the thing. The filling of the Holy Spirit is so important. Oh, yes. This day uh, is this scripture fulfilled uh, in your ears. And all bear him witness and, and, one, and, and wondered, verse 22, wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of it. His gracious words. Grace came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. Uh, at the gracious words proceeding out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? What they did was they degraded him. They degraded him. It says, and he said unto them, you will surely say, Unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever ye have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in the country. They were non-believers, you see. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Isn't that something? Did you know a lot of times all the way through the Bible, a prophet or a preacher is not accepted in their hometown? Jesus wasn't. He was scorned in his own time. He said, did, did, did you hear what they said? Isn't this the son of, of Mary and Joseph? Now, he wasn't. He was the son of Mary, but he wasn't the son of Joseph because he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. You see, they didn't believe that. And they said, uh, don't, her, don't his brothers, he had brothers and sisters. So what they said is that they denied that Jesus Christ is God. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is God. You've got to believe that he is the anointed one and that he is the one that came down here from heaven, born of the Holy Ghost, and to, to live a sinless life and die a shameful death and to raise from the grave victorious the resurrection which we celebrate here uh, next, uh, next Sunday. Would, uh, would he have been uh, uh, born on that day? No. By the way, they changed that Easter all the time. You know why? Uh, the Catholics got all mixed up uh, with heathens and, and uh, false worshipers, and that's where you came up with Easter, in case you didn't know the history of Easter. It was the Roman ca Catholics trying to get more people in, uh, into their foolishness, uh, and, and so they, uh, they, 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 they hooked up um, uh, with a sex god, uh, Estrus, and, and they, that's, where they got, that's where you get Easter. So I, I, I'd rather, I know what, but what we say, to, when we say Easter, we think about the resurrection of Christ. So I'm glad, I'm glad most people say that. I, I'd rather call it Resurrection Sunday. Do you know when it happened? I don't know. But it, uh, but, but it had nothing to do with the full moon and the equinox and all that baloney. That's all heathenism, and, uh, and it, that's all of the devil. So religion is of the devil. Just remember that. Religion is of the devil. All of these holy days and... And I had someone that should have known better texted me this morning. Someone I texted, and, and uh, uh, he said, Happy Palm Sunday. I don't believe in none of that baloney. I don't believe in Palm Sunday. I don't believe in... Uh, I might believe... Uh, you and I might believe in this day, Billy Joe. It's called Fat Tuesday. <laughs> Billy Joe believes in Fat Tuesday. So do <laughs> Travis believes in Fat Tuesday. Every Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> For Billy Joe and uh, uh, who, uh, who else is a Fat Tuesday here today? Let me look around. Who else is a Fat Tuesday guy? I would never pick on a lady. I got a few more. Oh, look at Big Gut sticking out here in the front. Victor's a Fat Tuesday guy. Uh, and my friend in the back there, I'm not going to make mention any names. I'm looking at him now. He might be a Fat Tuesday guy, too. <laughs> They got Maudy Thursday and Ash Wednesday. That's a bunch of Catholic foolishness, and the Lutherans have picked it up and all of that. And Let's just have resurrection every day, every Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Let's preach the resurrection every day of our life and not have some holy day once a year. And uh, and then tells you, oh, you got to go, oh, you got, oh, you got to go to church on Easter. No, oh, come on. We gather together because we're saved, because of the resurrection. Amen? Amen. Amen. I ain't got a Catholic bone in my body. I ain't got no Fat Tuesday in me or no Ash Wednesday or 
Uh, when is that supposed to be? Was that last week? Is it sometime? I see some people come around had that dirt on their forehead. Was that a week or two ago? I don't know. That's all holy days and religion, and it'll take you to hell fast. Religion will take you to hell. All of the holy days and all of the hocus pocus, diamond ocus, and sacrifice the mass, and and all of that. Believe in believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Amen. Amen. And if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you today and you're here and you're not saved, you need to get saved. Amen. We've got unsaved people in our church here today. Amen. We've got unsaved people out that watch us on Facebook. Amen. Get saved. Amen. Throw away religion. Throw away your Catholic religion. Throw away your Lutheran religion. Amen. Throw away your Baptist religion. There's Baptists. I'm a Baptist preacher that have Baptist religion and think the religion of being a Baptist or because Grandma was a Baptist or getting to heaven or or because her mama or grandma or someone was Pentecostal or getting to heaven. You're not getting to heaven by but all through Jesus Christ, the risen Savior, and you must repent and turn from your sins and be saved. Amen? Amen. So we read our text verse again. 418. Luke. Jesus speaking. The Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon Jesus. Just came upon him at his baptism. And, uh, and then uh, he went out in the wilderness to be tempted. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I love it. I'm be like Jesus. I'm preaching to the poor. I'm doing it today. Praise God. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Oh, I love it. I love it. I want to do it like Jesus did it. And to preach deliverance to the captives. Yeah, I want to deliver to... Uh, uh, from smoking and drinking and on and on and on and wickedness and everything like that. And that's what Jesus did and that's what the Holy Spirit will do if you or I are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We can preach it. Amen. And the recovering of sight to the blind, lost in sin, going to hell, and set at liberty them that are bruised. You ought to memorize that verse. You ought to do it and because Jesus did it, you ought to, you ought to get filled with the Spirit. Because he says, greater works shall you do than I do. When he went to heaven, you know what he said? Acts 1.8. What does it say? You shall be endued with power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. He says, tarry, wait, till you get the power. 120 people tarried for 10 days. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were saved and baptized and added to the church. We're, not, we're going to baptize today. I don't know how many, but it ain't going to be 3,000, I don't think, because we ain't got 3,000 in, in this gathering. We're going to baptize today. I'd like to see the day when we, you see, you can't baptize three. I, I had a preacher friend of mine named Jack Hiles in the great city of Chicago in Hammond, Indiana, the greater Chicago area. In one day, they baptized 10,000 people in one day in the 1980s. Yeah, you talk about New Testament Christianity. They didn't get 3,000. They got 10,000. He wanted me to go down there and help him baptize folks. He, his, one of his secretaries called me and said, Brother Bart, can you come? We're going to have a big day. We're going to pray God to give us over 10,000 souls and baptize them. I said, man, I got my own thing to do. I had my own thing to do in Milwaukee. We probably would have baptized 25 or 30 that day. I said, I got my own thing here in Milwaukee. I can't come, I can't come down to Hammond because uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't want to because I wasn't called to that. That was his deal, and he had a bunch of preachers there with him and everything. But listen, let's get into soul-saving business, amen? amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, hath anointed me to preach. Preach the gospel. Go everywhere and preach the gospel, every soul. Win souls, win souls. That's all. We're here to do what? Win souls. I'm here for no other reason. Win souls. I've won a few. I've won some people. I work at it every day of my life. I win it, winning souls every day. I work at it every day of my life. I don't get as many as I should. I need to be more full of the Spirit. How about you, Christian? You, got, you ever got any? There's a lot of Christians never had a soul saved in their life. Never even how you expect to get any soul saved you never tell anybody, huh? You sure you're going to win those souls if you never tell anybody, huh? So worried about yourself, your selfishness, and your greed, and your life, and 
Lord, give me this and Lord, give me this. You ought to pray this. Lord, give me souls. Give me souls. That's what Christians ought to be crying for because this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. There's late way upon the blue. Oh, heaven's beckoned me. Heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Problem with most folks is they're too at home in this world, especially in America. We're in the land of pleasure and sin and shame, innocent amusements all around us. God help us. Let's snatch some souls out of the fire. Amen. Let's prepare for heaven. And let's get some precious souls to be saved. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now for this wonderful verse. Jesus is launching verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointing me to preach the gospel to the poor. <laughs> Heal the brokenhearted. Deliver the captives. Sight to the blind. Deliverance to the captives. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. You say, preacher, I've been delivered. I'm a born-again Christian. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed in church. But you say, I'm saved. Slip your hand up. Say, I'm saved. I'm saved. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands down. You're here and you say, I don't know I'm saved, preacher. If I die tonight, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. I need you to pray for me. Would you slip your hand up? Just slip it up. Let me see your hand. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Is there others? Just slip your hand up. Say, pray for me, pastor. I'm not sure I'm saved. Anybody else? How about out there on Facebook? Do you need to be saved? You can pray this sinner's prayer with me too and be saved today. I hope you will if you're not. Let's have the sinner's prayer and those in the auditorium here that aren't saved can be saved and those that are out in Facebook can be saved. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. If God's speaking to your heart here in the church building or out there in Facebook, you can be saved simply by calling upon the Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It has nothing to do with baptism or good works or anything. It has to do with believing. We're going to baptize today as a picture of salvation. It won't save anybody. If you don't know you're saved and you've never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. This is the prayer. Pray it. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart I turn from my sins receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed here in church. You say, Pastor, I wasn't sure I was saved, but I prayed that prayer and I meant it today. Just slip your hand up and say, I did it today and I meant it in my heart. Just let me see your hand if you trusted Christ today. Anybody in the auditorium? How about someone out there in Facebook? Anybody at all out there in Facebook? Just If you trusted Christ, let me know about it. Lord, thank you that we have the saving gospel. And now, Lord, I pray you'd appeal to anybody here in the church. We have some lined up for baptism, but others maybe need to be. You've never understood the significance of believer's baptism here in church. You said, yes, I'm saved, but I've never really publicly declared it and made an open confession that I'm identified with Christ and the old life is behind me and the new life is ahead of me. I've never really confessed that and understood the true meaning of believer's baptism, but I'm willing to do it today to be shown before the church and the world that, that I am identified with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. The baptism won't save me, but it shows I'm dead to that old life and I'm alive under Christ. I'm going to follow him. Oh, I hope there'll be people here today that will make that decision in their heart. We're thankful, Lord, for decisions that have been made for salvation and for turning away from uh, worldliness and, and uh, these things that have kept put us captive think about it friend you've heard me preach about it many of you have raised your hand would you get rid of that captivating that sin that so easily besets us yes. would you be rid of it today by claiming the blood of Christ on it and put your faith in the blood of Christ and through faith all things are possible and we can put the nastiness and the bondage behind us do it right now 
claiming the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. The same power that saved you can overcome the wickedness and that sin that First John tells us. If we say that we have no sin, we're lying. The truth is not in us. But First John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, help us now, dear Lord, as Christians to make those decisions individually to be clean and to be usable so we can be filled like Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, and be soul winners. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Facebook folks. We're going to we're gonna, uh, get off of Facebook here if I can see where it says in. Where am I? Where's it say in? Man, I can't get out of this thing. Let me go up here. Huh. It's supposed to say finish here somewhere. It ain't saying it nowhere. Hit that, baby get rid of this finish there we go all right facebook goodbye we'll see you tonight share this with someone today talk to you tonight